Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we have uh, discussed about uh, uh, nozzles and uh, diffusers. Uh, these are various uh, varying area ducts, and uh, one application where uh, this is extensively used is in the design and operation of experimental test facilities, uh, uh, aerodynamic uh, facilities. So, when uh, one designs uh, any uh, aircraft or objects moving in air uh, having very high uh, velocities, uh, then one has to understand uh, the various forces or the flows around these bodies and uh, the way it is done uh, experimentally is by designing uh, wind tunnels um, that can uh, create such flows. So, ideally uh, what uh, is done, uh, what happens in practice is that you have a body moving in air, uh, uh, maybe an aircraft, it can be uh, uh, F, uh, maybe a rocket, uh, uh, maybe a launch vehicle or it can also be a uh, aircraft, a transport aircraft or a military aircraft, okay. they can go on various uh, Mach number ranges. Okay. Uh, so, but they are all uh, very big, so you cannot uh, test uh, them directly in uh, wind tunnels very uh, difficult because of their size. So, usually what is done is their size is scaled down and we also use the approach uh, that uh, instead of having the body moving at a particular uh, velocity, we uh, keep the body stationary and allow the flow to happen. Uh, at the same uh, Mach numbers that the body is uh, flying. Uh, and then uh, in steady flows, uh, we should be able to get, um, when everything is uh, steady, then we should be able to get the forces and uh, uh, moments uh, from these tests and that can be used as uh, data towards designing these kind of uh, objects. Uh, so, here we produce the uh, flow in a very controlled and uh, repeatable uh, manner and these are also useful to study uh, in a fundamental way what is happening to uh, compressible flows. But when you look at uh, simulating such, uh, I mean trying to put uh, uh, objects which are there in real flight, you want to put it inside the wind tunnel, you obviously have to bring down the scale, so they are scaled down models. Uh, then in order to uh, see that uh, the results from the wind tunnel do hold good even in actual scenarios, uh, there are certain uh, uh, sort of care that should be taken uh, and these are done through what are known as uh, dynamic uh, similitude. You have uh, uh, by scaling the model, you have ma maintained the geometry in a scaled fashion, but uh, that is not uh, sufficient. Uh, you should ensure that the forces are also scaled in a certain way, uh, commensurate way and uh, this is uh, done uh, by uh, a Buckingham Pi analysis that would have been covered in uh, fluid dynamic classes. Mm. So, uh, we talk about uh, various non-dimensional numbers. Reynolds number, Mach number, but in uh, uh, compressible flows, uh, both Reynolds number and Mach number are important. We should be uh, getting same Reynolds number and Mach number. Uh, besides that, there are other uh, issues uh, like flow enthalpy. Mm, so, when you take certain objects which are flying at very high speeds, say Mach 6, Mach 7, or uh, there are uh, objects which are uh, re-entering the earth's atmosphere, uh, then these objects fly at very high speeds and uh, when uh, 
flow comes on to these bodies then the kinetic energy of the flow gets converted to uh, enthalpy okay, or internal energy then temperatures can go really very high. Okay. So, uh, it, then at that point uh, some things change in the flow because of uh, certain high temperature effects. So, uh, while maintaining Reynolds number and Mach number uh, the same is important so that there is dynamic uh, similitude, uh, we need to simulate the flow enthalpy also so that uh, effects like high temperature effects can also be uh, simulated. Then if you want to see that uh, uh, heat transfer is uh, also uh, being simulated especially in high temperature flows, then you are also requiring certain temperature ratios uh, that at the of the fluid at the wall and uh, of the wall itself. So, uh, these ratios are maintained in a certain fashion. So, uh, it is not uh, just uh, that we have a particular uh, facility and we can do uh, certain tests, it is that we have to maintain all uh, these parameters so that uh, results obtained in the uh, test facilities are useful and they can be transferred uh, to the real flights also. So, there is challenges involved here. So, uh, when designing such uh, compressible flow wind tunnels, uh, then obviously we use a uh, lot of principles of uh, varying area ducts, uh, shock waves and how they interact. So, uh, now we will see a few uh, 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 sort of principles, first principles of uh, about these uh, wind tunnels. Generally, they are categorized as uh, continuous flow facilities and short uh, duration uh, facilities. Um, so, for example, this is a schematic of a uh, continuous flow uh, facility. We know now that to produce a Mach number which is greater than 1, uh, you need to provide a significantly higher uh, pressure. So, pressure ratios across the nozzle. So, this is a nozzle, a nozzle block. So, you have nozzle. So, nozzle uh, converts uh, the, a subsonic flow. Uh, to a supersonic flow uh, which can be maintained in the test section. So, this is a test section where you can place a model for example, some model like this can be placed and you can have instrumentation to do various uh, measurements on this model. If this is supersonic you will have a shock wave around it and you will observe all these uh, flow phenomena. You can measure pressures you can measure temperatures, measure forces and so on. And after the flow passes over the model, uh, it is diffused, uh, it is um, uh, pressure is recovered in a diffuser section and uh, uh, the velocity is brought down. Uh, this is uh, done so that we can uh, save some amount of energy, because uh, to operate these kind of facilities you need huge amounts of uh, energy to produce uh, the pressure ratios which are uh, very high. Uh, some of the examples we were seeing say, say Mach 2, Mach 3, uh, the pressure ratio required uh, increased uh, very quickly. So, uh, uh, to provide the pressure ratio in a continuous facility like what is shown here, you will have a compressor which operates continuously. This is uh, a bare bone schematic, it is like a skeletal structure, there are a lot more uh, intricacies to these uh, wind tunnels, but the essential features are uh, a nozzle uh, and a diffuser and the test section. Okay. So, uh, diffuser converts uh, this uh, supersonic flow to subsonic flow and uh, now here you should uh, uh, make note of this. Uh, a difference in the throat of the nozzle, see this is a throat of the nozzle and you look at the throat of the diffuser, this is a throat of the diffuser. But you can observe that uh, a throat of diffuser is greater than a throat of nozzle. You should ask uh, the question uh, that why is it so, if, if I take uh, this uh, 
duct I have uh, uh, Mach number becoming greater than 1 here and then uh, again I have to convert when I have to convert back it is another CD duct ok and here Mach number is 1 at the throat ok Mach number is equal to 1 Mach number becomes greater than 1 and then while coming back it should again go back to 1 and then further diffuse. So, then if that is the case these two area ratios uh, should be the same, uh, but that is not the case and we discussed this that the problem with diffusers is that uh, you should uh, handle the starting problem. Uh, when this wind tunnel is about to start then uh, you always do not have the exact operating conditions. So, we know the nozzle op, uh, starting operation characteristics initially uh, it will be fully subsonic thereafter you get uh, shock waves and then they move uh, out into the test section. So, this problem where um, you get shock waves in the test section is what decides how the diffuser should be uh, uh, designed. So, it is not always that. Uh, the throat area of the diffuser will be equal to the throat area of the nozzle. Now, uh, uh, the amount of energy required to run such uh, continuous facilities for long times is very huge. Uh, so, as a consequence most of the places what they have is usually an intermittent type of uh, wind tunnel where they have large uh, high pressure uh, tanks. Uh, a compressor is used to fill this high pressure tanks over a longer duration of time. Uh, this uh, ensures that you can do this compression effectively uh, and store it in uh, large tanks. It is very similar to having a rechargeable battery and then uh, when required uh, this flow is passed through a nozzle and into the uh, test section. Uh, but the uh, uh, point is that uh, this whatever uh, high pressure that you had stored in uh, such pressure vessels in such reservoirs is limited. So, this cannot be run continuously it is it will be for a smaller duration of time, but still uh, the duration of time that we talk about in such blowdown type wind tunnels will be in the matters of uh, tens of seconds or uh, few minutes. So, it is of that kind, uh, but it will not be hours or long duration like that of the continuous facility. Uh, they are of uh, three kinds, one is you can have a high pressure uh, storage and then uh, pass it through a nozzle and then you have a test section and then uh, this is exhausted right into the atmosphere or ambient after properly uh, reducing its velocity by a uh, diffuser ok. That kind of uh, wind tunnel where only uh, high pressure systems are used uh, they are known as blow down type uh, wind tunnels. Uh, since pressure ratio is important you can now understand that it is for area uh, for varying area duct is the pressure ratio that is important to produce a certain Mach number uh, and uh, really not the absolute pressure. So, you could provide the pressure ratio by giving a higher pressure upstream. So, you can give a higher pressure upstream here that is P0 is very high or you can also do the same thing by maintaining low pressure downstream that is what is done here PV back is reduced. Mm, this type of wind tunnels are known as in draft wind tunnels they take atmospheric air draw in atmospheric air. So, P0 is equal to P atmosphere. Uh, but they have very low, uh, low vacuums in large vacuum tanks and then uh, a nozzle is used to produce uh, uh, the required flow in the test section. Why do we need different kinds of facilities? We need to uh, get uh, different Reynolds numbers and uh, Mach numbers. A Reynolds number is uh, rho V d by nu. So, uh, in a compressible flow both nu, rho and v all of them are uh, variables d is a typical uh, dimension. Uh, so, um, in certain kind of facilities you get certain Reynolds numbers in some other kinds you get a different Reynolds numbers. 
okay so uh, you can combine the benefits of both of them and have a pressure vacuum driven wind tunnel where you have both high pressure and vacuum on either sides okay so uh, this is also uh, possible so uh, if you look at uh, the operating characteristics of these uh, wind tunnels uh, so this here we come into variable area ducts and shocks and how they interact as we had uh, said before a ideal uh, case the ideal case of a wind tunnel operation is when you have uh, uh, the flow uh, that is m less than 1 this is the nozzle block so uh, flow is less than uh, Mach number is less than 1 so in the nozzle uh, then uh, it accelerates pressure reduces uh, you have Mach number 1 at the throat and then you have uh, uh, the test section here uh, in this uh, region and after the test section uh, the flow diffuses from Mach number greater than 1. So, here Mach number is greater than 1 to Mach number less than 1. If, you, if this diffusion is ideally carried out without any shocks then Mach number here should be 1 m should be equal to 1 this is the ideal case if you think about it this is the ideal case but uh, the problem here is that during uh, starting of these wind tunnels uh, shocks are developed at the nozzle because nozzle starts and the pressure ratio is not always ideal so as it is uh, starting it will develop shocks within the nozzle and ultimately these shocks come into the uh, test section so uh, the strongest possible shock that can come in is for the designed operation so for example if this uh, Mach number in this test section is Mach number equal to 3 the area ratio to be provided across the nozzle uh, will be corresponding to that is a test section by or a exit by a throat of the nozzle will be corresponding to Mach number uh, 3, 3. So, corresponding to that you will have this area ratio and uh, but if a shock the strongest possible shock that would exist will be if it exists at the uh, at test section then Mach number is 3 Mach number is 3 exactly 3 and then uh, you have the strongest shock uh, this shock can come within the duct if uh, the diffuser was designed uh, such that it would support only ideal operation uh, then we have already discussed that a shock that stands at the entry of the uh, of a converging divergent diffuser if it has to be pulled inside uh, then the area ratio at the throat or at the throat of the diffuser uh, cannot be uh, that for an ideal operation the area ratio has to be or the throat area or minimum area of a diffuser will be greater than uh, the ideal operation A star. Okay. So, uh, this is the main criteria by which such uh, design of wind tunnels is done, design of diffusers of wind tunnels is done. So, that uh, you get what uh, appropriate uh, uh, Mach number is required within the test section, you get that Mach number inside the test section. So, that way this uh, shock is able to be pulled out of this mm, test section uh, it can either stand uh, somewhere in the diverging uh, passage or at uh, the throat the uh, maximum possible upstream direction that the shock can take is at the uh, throat so during startup if you look at the pressures so this is pressure distribution for ideal case where there are no shocks now this is during startup uh, you can have a shock at the test section so across the nozzle there is a smooth decrease of pressure but there is a shock at the test section so pressure increases uh, this is subsonic so Mach number is less than 1 uh, so then it uh, sees a varying area uh, duct uh, CD duct first uh, it decreases the uh, Mach number decreases uh, sorry Mach number increases uh, it reaches the minimum area 
but then uh, it will not reach Mach number equal to 1. So, uh, therefore, further diffusion happens. So, Mach number uh, reduces here and pressure will increase. Uh, diffuser is useful so that uh, the various systems uh, that uh, you are providing say high pressures or there is a fan or a compressor. Uh, you can keep the work done minimum by ensuring there is a uh, pressure recovery. Uh, otherwise, it is uh, uh, the amount of energy required will be much higher. So, this is during uh, startup at the startup uh, this will be the case and uh, uh, during ideal running the operation then what is expected is uh, that uh, you have a shock free flow. Uh, that is Mach number is greater than 1 after the nozzle, it has achieved a design Mach number, so M, M designed and uh, uh, when diffusion happens in the diffuser, uh, uh, the minimum possible shock because shock now that uh, we cannot do away with the shock uh, in the diffuser, uh, but what we can do is uh, reduce the strength of the shock. So, uh, because shock uh, is entropy generating it reduces the efficiency of uh, uh, the device. Uh, so, uh, if you have minimum possible shock strength uh, then the device is more efficient and uh, that is possible at the minimum area because there uh, the supersonic Mach number is minimum. If the shock stands in a diverging passage at some other point here then it would have decelerated to the minimum Mach number, but again accelerated to much higher Mach numbers and the shock standing in the divergent portion will be much stronger. So, ideal running condition uh, is when the shock is at the minimum area of the uh, uh, wind tunnel, so diffuser of the wind tunnel a C D diffuser. So, uh, putting all these uh, ideas together you can see uh, various ways in which uh, uh, the uh, operation of wind tunnel takes place uh, from startup. Uh, the shock actually progresses all the way from the nozzle uh, to the diffuser and then it is stationed either at the throat or stationed away uh, in the divergent uh, passage. Uh, so, uh, to ensure that this uh, shock does not stand in the test section, okay, to this is known as a starting of wind tunnel or a started wind tunnel. To ensure that we have to see uh, that uh, this area of the diffuser is higher uh, than that of the uh, nozzle, but uh, the exact conditions can be uh, calculated. Okay. So, this is a very important uh, point in these operation of wind tunnels. So, guiding principle we have uh, discussed uh, it is P01 A1 star is equal to P02 A2 star where P02 by P01 is uh, is the uh, stagnation pressure ratio across a normal shock. Okay. Uh, besides uh, these points, uh, there are other uh, challenges also uh, in uh, wind tunnels. Uh, one is, uh, uh, so now we know that you have to design for starting that means initially you have to give much higher uh, pressure so that uh, the nozzle starts, the diffuser starts and the wind tunnel operates. So, that uh, is known as a starting load, the starting load that you have to give or starting pressures that you have to give the wind tunnel so that it uh, achieves starting is quite high. Uh, so, uh, if you are putting some models inside uh, and you want to test them then you have to design them for much higher pressures than their operating uh, uh, ideal running pressures of the wind tunnel. So, these uh, uh, are certain challenges similarly the challenges are there for instrumentation. Not only that um, these uh, supersonic wind tunnels uh, you see that uh, when uh, Mach numbers become high not only does pressure drop temperature also decreases rapidly. 
So, you have other uh, challenges coming in if there is any humidity in the air that you are using that will uh, condense. So, that can uh, cause problems in uh, the wind tunnel uh, whatever test that you are doing. So, humidity control becomes important you need dryers. Uh, if Mach numbers become higher then it is also possible that pressure temperatures reduce so low uh, that air itself may liquefy. So, those problems also occur. So, they are uh, liquefaction that time you need to heat the air. So, having a operational wind tunnel involves not only uh, uh, aspects about uh, nozzles, diffusers, but also various other uh, accessories to see that the wind tunnel operates uh, correctly. So, uh, here uh, are some images of uh, uh, wind, a very small uh, wind tunnel in uh, uh, Indian Institute of Science. Mm, so, you can see the test section here uh, before uh, the test section there is a uh, nozzle block which is internal we, we cannot see it and uh, before that there is a stagnation chamber and uh, this is the uh, diffuser section going into the dump tank and then from there it goes uh, all the way outside okay to the vacuum line and these are uh, nozzle blocks they are uh, specially designed so that the flow is uniform within the wind tunnel they are known as contoured nozzle blocks and uh, uh, we can uh, do this uh, design uh, using uh, certain special tools uh, which we will learn in later classes. So, these are the uh, uh, high pressure tanks, uh, compressors, dryers, high pressure tanks and vacuum tanks. So, uh, you need good amount of storage to run even for a few seconds. Uh, now, the, we come to uh, short duration test facilities. Uh, these uh, test facilities are uh, required because uh, when we go to very high uh, Mach numbers, then we need to simulate not just uh, Reynolds number Mach number, but also flow enthalpy. That means, temperatures are high, uh, high stagnation temperatures, but when stagnation temperature becomes very high, then you have a problem of uh, uh, the materials becoming heated of, of the wind tunnel it becomes very hot and they may not be able to withstand the high temperatures. So, the way to uh, uh, go about uh, such a problem is uh, to reduce test time to very small values and uh, this is achieved by uh, combining uh, a shock tunnel which can produce a shock uh, tube. Uh, which can produce very high pressures and temperatures to a wind tunnel uh, by means of a nozzle. So, this is a shock tube uh, we discussed this shock tube uh, in uh, early parts of this um, course and uh, this is a nozzle attached to the shock tube and uh, finally, the uh, exit part is the test section. So, uh, here the pr uh, problem is that the test times become very small in the ranges of milliseconds not in uh, seconds. So, there is challenge in uh, uh, instrumentation and measurement at very uh, small times, uh, but with adequate uh, sort of uh, advanced facilities it can be done uh, very well. So, that is uh, possible. So, here you have uh, uh, the photograph of a uh, shock tunnel at uh, Indian Institute of Science and uh, there is uh, a driver section which is filled with uh, high pressure and a driven section which is at lower pressure and a diaphragm uh, is situated between uh, these two and when appropriate pressure ratio is uh, achieved across the uh, driver and driven this diaphragm bursts a shock is produced as travels in the driven section compressing the gas and then further that uh, uh, high pressure high temperature gas is expanded through a nozzle into the uh, test section. So, this is the expanded view of the uh, test section of uh, such a typical uh, tunnel. So, um, with this uh, uh, a uh, introduction about various test facilities for uh, compressible flows high speed flows uh, is given and also some uh, photographs of such facilities in 
in detail of science has been explained. Uh, so, now let us uh, look uh, at some simple uh, problems on diffuser starting because that is very uh, important to understand about uh, supersonic diffusers. Uh, in the next class, we will do a few problems on diffuser starting. Thank you.